dogs, elephants, many other animals. Oh my! The Vietnam War was home to many, many unconventional tactics from 1955 to 1975. Now, if tactics are used often enough and they are initially considered unconventional, are they now no longer considered unconventional? Would an unconventional tactic used many times be now a conventional tactic? I don't know. The purpose of this video is not to be an arbiter on uh, words. We can just go to the dictionary to find out what they mean. The purpose of this video is to show you, explain to you, how animals were used in the jungles of Vietnam on both sides, on both sides of the conflict. From the loyal war dog to the mighty elephant, animals were used in many different ways, and we're gonna explore them all. I am your host, Mandatory Fun Day, and I'm here to tell you about things you didn't know about animals in the Vietnam War. War dogs were an integral part of the Vietnam War. They're highly trainable, they're small, they didn't consume tons of food, so logistically they had a relatively small footprint, and they were used in many different ways. They increased the survivability, and in many ways the lethality of their human counterparts. They were used in sentry roles, scout roles, tracker roles, and mine detection and tunnel roles. Now, sentry dogs, operated much like the dogs that we keep in our homes today, but instead of barking at the uh, garbage truck or the Amazon delivery guy, these sentry dogs would be barking at things that wanted to flay the skin from your scalp, um, primarily enemy soldiers. Sentry dogs were used extensively during the Tet Offensive all the way back in 1968. The Tet Offensive was a massive surprise operation that the North Vietnamese forces and the Viet Cong conducted against the South Vietnamese forces and the United States. The presence of sentry dogs allowed for significantly fewer attacks to take place on bases where Americans and South Vietnamese were. They, they increased the survivability tremendously um, and kind of decreased total casualties during that time. Scout dogs would be used to go out and look at things, obviously. They probably had some, some sort of system for the dogs to bring back information, or they had something that the dogs were supposed to cue for um, and then return, and then they'd know, hey, we know this thing's over here because the dog knows, and it came back. Scout dogs played a pivotal role in Operation Cedar Falls. Operation Cedar Falls was meant to eliminate the Iron Triangle, which was a series of strongholds for the Viet Cong. Scout dogs were pivotal in identifying ambushes and allowing troops to have greater freedom of maneuver so they could accomplish their objectives. Tracker dogs were used primarily to locate enemy combatants and then locate uh, lost service members who we would then recover. Operation Junction City took place in early 1967. This was the largest U.S. airborne operation since World War II, and it was aimed at locating and disrupting enemy supply lines. Logistics are absolutely vital in combat. Your military is directly limited by your ability to logistically supply it. Scout dogs were integral in locating enemy supply trains, enemy supply chains. Ah, so one of those words makes sense. And the loggies are pulling their hair out now. Finding uh, logistic supply chains in the jungle would have proved extremely difficult, right? The jungle, over it's overgrown. You can't see, you know, even a couple feet in front of you. You can't see from airborne. So scout dogs would have been absolutely pivotal in finding them and eliminating them. Mine and tunnel dogs, they would, uh, you know, locate mines in tunnels. Uh, shocking. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I crack myself up. Yeah, they would go into tunnels, which were extremely dangerous. You talk to anybody who was a tunnel rat or anybody that knows anything about tunnel warfare, and they'll tell you it's one of the nastiest places to do any kind of fighting. Dogs uh, probably saved thousands of lives by locating mines that were in tunnels, uh, which would then be set off uh, trapping, you know, U.S. service members. War dogs underwent rigorous training at Fort Benning, now Fort Moore, Georgia. They were trained to remain silent, carry out specific tasks, uh, respond to hand and arm signals, and, and various other things. So Fido went through basic training just like you and me. Over 4,000 war dogs served during the Vietnam War, saving countless lives and accomplishing significant, significant objectives for the human counterparts. 
Now we're going to talk about the other side, the North Vietnamese and the Viet Cong, which were the enemies to the South Vietnamese in the United States. And they relied heavily on elephants. I cannot imagine how shocking it would have been to see an elephant roaming around for the average American, right? Ele you see elephants in the zoo, you don't see them kind of walking down the street. Elephants were used primarily for transportation and logistics, right? It's a m massive beast of burden. You could load an elephant with a ton of weight and it probably wouldn't even notice it. Notably, elephants carried uh, significant logistics, uh, ammunition, supplies, all of that stuff, all the things you need to fight war during the Ho Chi Minh Trail operation. The Ho Chi Minh Trail was a critical supply line for enemy forces. And anytime you can have a, a designated, uh, a, a traveled, a known supply line for your logistics elements, it is ideal and it is incredibly valuable. Elephants were also used to move heavy artillery pieces across the battlefield. Can you imagine? Can you imagine you're, you're watching, you see an elephant and you're already shocked, and then you see an elephant with a gun on its back. It's not like an AK-47, it's like a gun gun. You know, it's a cannon. It's something that you know is going to splatter you and the boys into next week. Funny enough, elephants were also used as like mobile reconnaissance platforms, right? They're literally so tall, they could give people a higher vantage point, and that's super valuable, super valuable for scouts. So they would get on top of them and they'd look out and they could see significantly better on top of the elephants. There were some advantages and some disadvantages to the use of elephants. The advantages were that elephants could traverse extremely complex terrain, dense jungle, and they could ford rivers extremely effectively. And, and all of the things that I just mentioned are extremely difficult for anything other than a purpose-built military vehicle. And then those of us that have been in the military know, even when it's purpose-built, it's probably still a piece of garbage. During the Easter Offensive in 1972, elephants transferred supplies, they transported supplies in, uh, through what would have been impassable terrain. This was one of the largest scale offenses uh, that the uh, North Vietnamese and the Viet Cong undertook and elephants were absolutely crucial in maintaining their supply lines. Now some of the challenges were that elephants are extremely difficult to care for. Okay, they eat a lot, I would imagine. Elephants posed significant logistical challenges and on top of that they're freaking massive. Okay, so it's basically just a giant moving target. It's, it's very difficult to hide an elephant. I don't know if you've ever seen one in person but they're quite large. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching up to this point. If you want to support the channel, you can go buy some merch. You can sign up for my email newsletter on my website, or you can sign up for membership. Members receive 10% off on all merchandise purchases. You're able to vote on various polls that I'll be placing in there, uh, specifically things having to do with merch or things having to do with content. And on top of that, you're gonna get exclusive content that is only available to members. I'm also allowing messaging for members to me directly. So if you, if you message me, I'm going to see it because I'm going to read every single one of them. Today's exclusive content for this video for members only is going to be about a German shepherd named Nemo during the conflict. I'm going to tell you a little bit about his story. It's pretty heartwarming. Well, we talked about dogs on the friendly side. We talked about elephants on the enemy side, but many other animals were used in the conflict. Mules were used significantly by American and allied forces uh, to transport supplies. And mules are incredible beasts of burden. They're actually quite intelligent as well. Mules were used extensively during Operation MacArthur, where they were used to tr transport supplies through the Central Highlands. And the Central Highlands had incredibly complex and difficult ter terrain to traverse. Humans are not great at, at traversing difficult terrain, especially when under load. And I know we like to think we are, but we're not. Animals are significantly better at it, and mules are amazing at it. Monkeys and birds were actually used as early warning systems. <laughs> And I think that's hysterical because nobody would ever suspect a monkey hanging out up in a tree munching on some bananas, right? And then all of a sudden they're screeching and you're just like, ah, crap, I scared the monkey. But really what the monkey's doing is it's telling people exactly where to come and uh, dissect you. The Coochie Tunnels, and I probably said that name wrong. Uh, that name actually kind of sounds a little bit dirty um, when I said it. So I apologize for that. 
but they were uh, monkeys were used extensively to detect traps within the tunnels. And this was a series of tunnels that the Viet Cong were very fond of using. Insects were used in unconventional warfare. They would attack uh, f uh, forces with bees. Can you? It's literally like a cartoon. They go pull a beehive out of a tree. I don't know how they kept the bees docile enough. Uh, or, or the poor, poor guy that pulled it out of the tree probably just got stung a lot and they'd yeet it at the enemy forces. And, and, and yeah, that, then they would just get stung by a bunch of bees. It'd be terrible. There would be absolute chaos in, in camp or, you know, where you've set up in the field or the talk. God, can you imagine the commander trying to drink his coffee and suddenly he's been stung, stung by bees? Animals have been used alongside humans since the beginning of time in military conflicts, and they've been commemorated extensively throughout all our conflicts. Every single war museum you go to will generally make mention of at least a few, if not have an entire section uh, dedicated to the animals that have served alongside us. There are many notable memorials for our, uh, for our animal brethren, uh, and one notable one is the Vietnam War Dog Memorial in California. The Vietnam War was a testament to the resilience and the strength of both humans and animals. And I think animals don't get the credit or the limelight that they deserve, but they're absolutely fascinating to me, how we work alongside them to achieve our ends, even in, in military conflict. And it's pretty incredible when you have a level of trust with animals that you'll find with working military animals where they execute their objective in, under conditions that would frighten any person and they do it well thank you so much for watching if you have not become a subscriber or a follower why just do it today smash that button i appreciate it and i want to see you back i cannot wait to see your thoughts on this video and i'm sure you will give them to me thanks again and watch the next video in the queue